Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Let's get into it. One, two, three. Well, hello and welcome to this evening on My Whiskey Den, your favorite public access whiskey review show where craft whiskey is king, but not tonight. Tonight, that's all out the window. Tonight, we're going to the big boys of MGP and their VP of Brands, Andy Mancini. Thank you for joining us, Andy. We really appreciate you coming on um, and taking some time out of your night because we know we're, we're extending that work day a little bit further. So thank you for stopping and having a drink with us. That's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And I do want to apologize. That opening photo of me just proves I've got a face for radio. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was pretty good. Um, before we go further, because I always forget these things. Mike, what do we tell all our lovely fans at this moment? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below. Hit mm. that bell notification to find out when new episodes are coming out. And most every Monday night is one of these series, which is an evening with, as we have with our friend Andy tonight. Man. Like we were saying, I want to thank everyone for being in the chat. AJ, John Gunstall, Aaron, you're in here. Ice House, you're in here early, too. We like that. And there's a mandolin. You're new. Thank you for stopping in, too. Um, we always appreciate the promptness of you early birds because we, we like having people in here early to talk about stuff. Um, what's everyone in the chat got in their glass? And, Andy, what should we start with on this plethora evening that you've that you guys have provided. Yeah, since, since, yeah, since we're taking a stroll through the garden, right? So <laughs> I, I would suggest that we start with uh, Eight and Sand, um, which is actually our our newest uh, brand. We released it last year, uh, pre-COVID. Um, and uh, it is, uh, it's, it's part of our, what we call our Rack House series. And, and this is where our distillers and, and blenders primarily have a chance to kind of go wild and be innovative. And so I'll tell you a quick story about this before we start tasting. Be sure. interested to get here in the, in the uh, get my camera right. Aiden Stand is actually a real expression in the, in the railroad industry. It mm -hmm. really means, uh, you know, safe journeys, you know, be careful, come back. Um, and, and, they, and, and railroaders actually use that expression. Um, we were, you know, our headquarters is Atchison, Kansas which is one of the founding cities of the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railroad. And when we were we were launching this, we launched it in really started in late 2018, but 2019 was the 150th anniversary of the Transcontinental Railroad. Mm -hmm. And so we thought what what better way to honor Atchison um, and you know and honor honor you know sort of the, sort of the American uh, work ethic and with eight and stand and it's a, a blended bourbon whiskey i want to just sort of stop for a minute and talk a little bit about that when when most people you know say blended whiskey you know noses turn up people start you know, grimacing because why there's a lot of coloring right and a lot of gns right a lot of vodka in there well there is absolutely no gns and no coloring this coloring in this. What this is, is a blended bourbon whiskey. Think about this for a minute. If you're going to be a bourbon, right, you need to be at least 51% corn, right? But if you're going to be a blended bourbon whiskey, you better be a minimum 51% bourbon. And what we have here in, in Eight and Sand is our, our four legacy whiskeys in Lawrenceburg. We have bourbon, rye, corn whiskey, and light whiskey. And we blended these together. They're all uh, about seven years old. And and we really, we put this together to, to try to create an easy to drink, easy to mix, easy to approach uh, whiskey. You know, sort of we call it a gateway whiskey, right? You know, for, mm -hmm. for younger palates that aren't really uh, formed yet or are in, in the process of forming or transition from you know what you think is like really sweet craft beer mm -hmm. drinks, with, uh, drinks with umbrellas and then and then you'd move over to whiskey right so what we 
What we really wanted to do is just have something very approachable, very affordable, easy to drink, and a surprise in the glass. And that's it. So you want to, should we j dive in here for a minute? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so, you know, I get, I just get a lot of corn on this. I get a lot of sweet, kind of that dusty corn that you would, yeah. you would mm -hmm. get, you know, right out of the silo, right as you're, right as you're milling it. You know, and deeper in there, I'm getting caramel and. I get a caramel know, molasses right? definitely as well. Yeah, too. yeah. I always pick up with our bourbons though a little bit of like like uh, Dr Pepper cherry coke, kind of something sweet and, and bright, you know, bright in there. But, I've got you know, a couple of them. Yeah, but for me, I think this is. I hate. To, well, I'm not gonna. I'll tell you, man. I love all my children, but this <laughs> this is like this is a go-to. I mean, it's and it's funny because when I you know I, my friends are are very big. Uh, whiskey lovers and all you know, high school buddies and college buddies. I get, I must, if I get two texts a week. I get, I get 10 and they're like, Oh my God, this thing is what, you know, why have you hid it from us for so long? So uh, <laughs> anyway, let's take a step. Let's just try this. Yeah. Right. It's bright. Mm -hmm. It's got that good mouth feel. I'm getting all that sweetness of bourbon and, and uh, all that corn whiskey. And of course, light whiskey is nothing more than corn whiskey that then aged in a used mm -hmm. barrel. So it's corn on corn on corn. So it's, um, but then you get a little bit of that, that rice spice, right? A little bit of that picking spice, you know, a little cinnamon on the back note. For me, that's and, where it comes in like two thirds of the way in is where all of a sudden the rye starts to to, to mm -hmm. work its way in and yeah it's not forceful it's not like it's elbowing its way in there it just kind of glides into the drink a polite so. conversation in a cocktail party right just so well, yeah. how about you right just kind of he just kind of eases his way in <laughs> anyway mm. mike or ben what are you getting for some flavors on this one i get nilla wafers on the nose and a little bit on the palate and that, and just because it's got like a like a condensed sweetness to it like a and like a little buttery wafer, and the yeah. and the fruit and everything else. You know, it's yeah, very light. All the above, a little buttered corn, and I even got a little bit of a grape bubble gum note, and just now some toasty coconut coming off of it. The bubble gum, I see what you're talking about. It's just like a a hint of big league chew mm -hmm. hidden hidden in there for a second. Just a little hint of it. Yeah, and you know the wafer, and, and I I get that. Yeah, that's a like that's a really good descriptor. You know, it's um <laughs> Well I'm fat, so <laughs> <laughs> we, we all like to eat on this show. So <laughs> listen, my my name ends in a vowel. Listen, I <laughs> <laughs> You know the we, value uh, of a good meal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My grandmother used to make gnocchi every Sunday. Oh, geez. that's the potato, right? Yeah, of course, you have that bread with that, and you now the rest is this. So, for 44%, oh, it has a nice oil content to it. Yeah, it for does. being at 44, mm -hmm. I get it has a nice swirl in the front half of it when it's going around, and they're pretty well nice with, with the oil on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the ABV was really uh, the pun, right? It's 8 and we had we wanted 88 proof, but. Um, one of the things is we do, we do um, and you'll see this tonight in, in the rest of our whiskey, um, we do not chill filter any of our whiskey. And so um, we do like a little bit higher proof. Uh, 94 is our sweet spot. You'll see that with George Remus. You'll see that with Rossville Union Mastercraft. And so we wanted to, you know, we wanted a little bit lighter, um, you know, ABV uh, for this, but we didn't want it too light because, you know, with flocking and things like that. Because we just don't chill filter, so you know we were sitting around and it's like, well, should it be 80, 85. I'm like, oh, I'll make it 88 and just keep, you know, keep with the, you know, with the name, and we'll see if people get the joke. But um, no, I, I, I like the way that. I thought that all pulled together when I was reading it. And I'm like, I like when things stack like that, and yeah. it works. Because there's yeah. just times people will put stuff together for advertising or being cool, and all of a sudden it's like, mm, maybe you shouldn't have had that much, you know, malt in there. You should. <laughs> Yeah, well, we toned it down a bit. Well, um, I'm gonna, Pat, Pat, I'm gonna tell you, we um, one of the things we we really 
strive uh, to do with all of our brands um, is is tell the right story. In fact, uh, one of our one of our kind of operating principles uh, at the MGP Brands is to focus on and authenticity. That's a, those are big words, but really what it means is, you know, every brand has a story and every story is true. And so, you know, when we talk about Atchison, Peak and Santa Fe Railroad, I also forgot to mention this, uh, this locomotive on the front label, 801 engine, was, an, was the actual, call it the Ford 150 of the railroad industry in the, in the, in the uh, 19th <laughs> century. And in fact, this actual 801 sits on the grounds of the Atchison Railroad Museum in Atchison, Kansas. So we really do try to try to bring it all home for, for everybody. And that always, and we always say that here, that the extra story to it that you can, uh, someone can attach to just adds, it adds to the whiskey. You know, it just adds to the depth of experience that, that you're having at that point. Oh, I'm sorry, everyone that heard my heater going. I forgot it, it got cold in Wisconsin <laughs> and I didn't, I forgot that was on for the first couple of minutes here. So that is all. <laughs> if you heard this word humming in the background, that was totally me and my apologies. <laughs> Should I be bringing my ice fishing gear up next week? or? <laughs> uh, it's 50-50. Like last week, we had two days that were at 50 degrees, and tomorrow's going to be at 80. It, it's all over the place oh, <laughs> right wow. now. That's <laughs> Fine. That's all good. <laughs> um, and I'm happy we got, got started on this one. Now, I, we probably should have started um, with the history of MGP or – do you want to talk about the history of MGP, or should we talk about your history? Because no, let's talk about MGP. Okay, um, let's talk about MGP. You don't, have to, you don't have to talk about me, but um, I just also want to just let everybody know here is that for those who like to, to mix their whiskeys, you know, even just a classic whiskey and coke or whiskey and ginger, it, 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 this holds up really, really well. So don't be afraid. I mean, that's kind of how we engineered it, so people can not be ashamed, right? So have fun. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about. Um, about MGP. Um, MGP is, uh, next year will be uh, 80 years old. We were founded in 1941 by Cloud Gray Sr., who was an investment banker out of Baltimore. And he was uh, sent on a mission during the war to find factories that could be you know, uh, employed and deployed by the War Department. Uh, to try to you know build up resources for uh, for the war effort, and so um, there was at um, at the time a small um, distillery uh, in Atchison. Kind of, it's the where it is today. It's just a lot bigger, um, and and he set about uh, building, expanding, and they made uh, they distilled um, industrial alcohol for the, uh, the the navy. It was torpedo propellant, basically. Um, that's what they did during, during the war. And then and then after the war, uh, the company, you know, took off um, doing, um, you know, mostly commodity industrial alcohol. So pharmaceutical grade alcohol, which we still do, think about hand sanitizer, um, and, and then uh, cough syrup and things like that. Um, and, and branched out um, pretty quickly to uh, to doing to doing industrial and commercial commercial distilling. Um, along the way, given the uh, the amount of grains that they were grinding, you know, they had to do something with with those spent grains. Um, and so uh, the the company developed uh, a very successful today uh, food ingredients business. And so, you know, the over the years, the company has learned you know how to separate the fiber and the proteins and starches uh, and grains. And so, you know, have created uh, a pretty robust business internationally uh, for, for primarily the baking industry. But, uh, you know, uh, we're, you know, we're, you know, we're the, we're sort of the Intel inside in the baking industry. Think about we're the fiber and fiber one. So if you, if you like, you know, if you eat any, any mission uh, products, breads or the tortillas, the, the, the low carb stuff for the fiber emission. Uh, we're on the bleeding edge of, of plant based protein technology. And so we sell all over the world. So that's been those, you know, the, the sourced alcohol and the food ingredients has been really the kind of the mainstay of the company. And then 
in 2011, so nine years ago, the company purchased uh, LDI, purchased Lawrenceburg Distilling in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. I guess as they say, you know, the rest is the rest is hit. So uh, we the company went very quickly to uh, ramp up and revamp uh, and improve the quality and focus in on on the heritage of Lawrenceburg, right? So once been um, you know owned by Seagrams and then Pernod and then a succession of, of private equity, but we're gonna come back to really the true history of Lawrenceburg tonight as we talk to talk about a couple of our other brands. But mm -hmm. you know, you you we have uh, really since 2011 have focused on on the craft industry, both uh, white goods. Uh, we're the largest domestic gin distiller. Um, you know, we do a lot of a lot of vodka, a lot of GNS uh, for the industry. So all of our white goods come out of our Atchison Distillery, Kansas Distillery, and all of our whiskeys come from Lawrenceburg. Um, and so, you know, we've been very focused, of course, on rye, which is you know the heritage of the distillery, um, and bourbon. Uh, and we do, you know, we do specialty mash bills, we do specialty grains. We have about fourteen or whiskey mash bills that we really focus in on. And as we get into sort of the emergence of the, of the MGP brands division, which is now officially uh, three years old, <laughs> um, you know, we've really, we've really focused our brands on, on really illuminating and showcasing the true talents of MGP. Well, and those two, two talents really are distilling Right, distilling capabilities, and then blending innovation. And so, we'll, you know, we started off with eight and sand. I told you it's our four legacy whiskeys. We do not use a single mash bill in any of our whiskeys. We use multiple mash bills. Mm -hmm. What, what our, you know, one of our team mantras is that one plus one has to equal three. So we're always striving <laughs> to to get a more challenging palate, a more interesting nose. Uh, you know, really a different whiskey that you might be expecting or that you might be used to. And so with that, you know, we also, we, we utilize, you know, our, our popular mash bills um, because we can. Uh, and we're able to access uh, the, you know, our oldest and our best uh, reserve because, you know, we've got a lot of it. So we might as well, um, which is really the genesis of the, of the, brand's, uh, the brand's group. Um, we had seen a lot of our, our customers exit and, you know, for a nice sum of money and, um, and they continue to be customers. But, you know, our board said, you know, basically we're losing some value here, right? I mean, people come to us to get started. People come to us, you know, to get off the ground and, and then they've created their brands and they're, they're off and running. And, you know, so the board basically said, well, what are we going to do about that? And, and what we said is, well, we you know we have the capability of capturing that, that that you know, if you will, that back end of the value chain, right? Because we know how to distill and we know how to age, we know how to make great whiskeys. We can also build brands. And so we uh, we really launched in June of 2017 with two brands. Uh, one was Till Vodka, which was our Kansas Meat Vodka. And distilled there in Atchison, Kansas. Um, and the second brand is the second uh, uh, whiskey we're going to taste tonight is George Remus, which was our is our bourbon. And you know the little background on this is, you know, we'll, we'll get a lot. We'll talk a lot about George, but George, this this brand was dedicated and built on uh, the the legacy, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, George Remus was the king of the bootleggers. And um, I will tell you right now that we've, we're very proud of this brand, but we purchased this brand in 2016. And um, it was, they were customers of ours. Three young entrepreneurs did a great job. And, um, you know, we're, we're kind of bootstrapping it a little bit. Um, and we sat down with them and said, what do you think? And they said, great. And we, we just the, the trademark from them. Uh, and then we set about to, to make a brand. Um, and we, you know, we completely revamped the, the liquid that was in here. Um, and, uh, we, 
you know, we started building packaging and the, and the promotion. And of course, we launched this in 2017 uh, in June. And then in November, on George's birthday, November 13th, we launched a series of Repeal Reserve. And we'll, we'll taste through series tonight. But, but there's, you know, a, 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 what we call a prohibition style uh, bourbon. Uh, George Remus is uh, about between, it's over five years old. Tap bottling happens to be about six and a half years old. We don't really worry about age here. It is, it will always be a straight bourbon. What we're really focused on is a profile. And what we really want is that rich bourbon on the front. And then we want that good spice, that MGP rice spice on the back. Because this is a combination of our 21% and our 36% high rye bourbons. When I say that is 21% rye, 4% malted barley, 75% corn. And you can do the do the rest of the math. Um, so it's, it's a bourbon, right? So, you know, 75 and 60% corn. We blend them. Uh, each bottling is a different blend because what we really want, we want is that kind of that, as I said, you want bourbon on the front, you know, Kentucky on the front and Indiana on the back. So, um, why don't we why don't we jump in here and just do a little bit of tasting here and we can talk a little bit more about the brand. I think we can handle but, that. Mm. So Ben, you know, the um a lot less uh, wafer on this one. I guess it was a mic you were saying wafer, sorry. But I'm getting a, a lot of that traditional, you know, what I would call bourbon nose, right? It's rich. The syrup, maple, honey. Yeah, definitely honey. And I'm getting like a, I'm having a hard time if it's like a molasses cookie. Or it's just like a really rich, like darker caramel that's just like right before it gets starts getting like that little burnt edge to it. Yeah, you're going to get that a mm. uh, a lot from our char, right? In the barrels, mm -hmm. you're gonna get the vanillins that have you know that seeped in o over the years. But a lot of that too is is going to be the rye because our rye will you know it leaches in a good way. You know, a lot of baking spices, right? You're gonna get that cardamom and cumin and cinnamon, and and it, you know sometimes it sort of says oh it, it, it smells burnt, but it's sort of like that good burnt. It's like mm -hmm. boosty, right, like marshmallow or like like you said the caramel. It's right when you get like that toasting kind of effect, whatever you're doing. Mmm, that's nice. Just want to say hi to oh Ed's in the chat. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for stopping in, Eli. Hmm. Okay, Mike Ben, what are you getting on the nose of this one? You get brown sugar and cherries. I always like yep. doing this with other people because it'll pull you into some of the things that you were you were hint, you were missing or weren't able to put your finger on. Well, we talked a little bit about bubble gum and and um, Dr. Pepper with with uh, eating sand, and there's kind of it's a lighter. And you will, I think you'll, I do get the cherry. In fact, I don't want to ruin the surprise. I do get, I get a lot of dark fruit in, in Repeal Reserve. So, but as you know, as you're stepping up the age and you're step, you know, you're stepping up the, the proofing. You're you're gonna get you're gonna get the the same family of of aroma, mm -hmm. but it's gonna get more intense, right? It goes from cherry to plum, right, or plum to blackberry. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm liking so far how your rye uh, just in general. I know we haven't hit the rise, but what you have in here that you guys consider like a higher rye content than some people have. Um, you guys don't go very heavy on the black licorice flavor, and I love you for that. Um. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's, I'll tell you, there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, if you're getting a lot of black licorice, it's because they burnt. The rye was burnt in, uh, in processing, and we can, we can talk about it. I talk about it when we're, when we're, with, we're talking about the rye, but, but rye is a very, very difficult grain to work with. When you... When you start to ferment and mash, right, mash your bourbon, you know, corn is kind of like cereal, right? It's like, you know, oatmeal. It, 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 it's sweet and it's soft and it's sort of, you know, liquidy. 
Well, even when you're even when you're you know raising the temperature during fermentation, it doesn't really coagulate, right? It it, it just keeps creating more and more sugar, and it kind of just becomes a lot more richer. But when you when you work with um, rye, the, the the protein molecules are, are in rye that if you if you literally you can burn it by get raising the temperature too fast, too high during fermentation. It turns into school paint, literally school paint. And the and the aftertaste, and you can't age it out. It is just, it just grows. It just burns. Right? It, it, um, I feel good. I feel like very Andy. Unpleasant I, I feel like Andy feels like I do about this. I'm feeling. Yeah. I'm feeling good about. This. I'm, trying, I'm trying to be nice about it, but yeah, you can screw it up pretty easily. It's like burning your batch of brownies, right? I mean, it's like you know, oh, it's a little burnt on. It's only burnt on the bottom. Well, yeah, but it tastes. It tastes burnt through the whole thing, right? So then, then you um, see your kid like shaving off the bottom part of it when he eats it. He's not eating that part, <laughs> right? That's right. But um, anyway, should we should we take a taste? Yeah. Hmm. Wow! And this is at forty-seven too, and I'm getting more yeah, cherry on this than I thought I was going to get. Yep. And it's, I would have guessed more like a forty percent than forty-seven. This punch is way below the belt on what's going on there. Yeah. Um, it, it's pretty well rounded. It's not very spiky in any in no. any of the it, fashion. It's very mellow, you know, and that. That really, I think, speak to our our, uh, our 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 warehouses, our our rack houses. You know, unlike Kentucky, and I'm not I'm not going to badmouth Kentucky, but you know, those are those are vertical aging chambers, right? You you walk in the bottom and you look to the top of the floors, and you can see all the barrels. Our our warehouses in Lawrenceburg are brick, and mm -hmm. what, what we call we we term them um, uh, horizontal aging chambers because each floor is separated by two of cement. So each floor is its own warehouse that in, in effect. Okay. And, and it, it's about 18 inches uh, thick brick uh, on the exterior. And we're right on the banks of the Ohio River. And so it's very humid. And so with the brick and the cement act is insulated. And so, you know, the heat of the summer, it, it, it's really going to be September before we start to feel it. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be Mar May before we kind of get rid of the cool, you know, of, mm -hmm. of the winter. So we have a very moderating uh, temperature, um, you know, in all of our warehouses. So uh, what we tend to do is um, uh, we tend to actually put more put more water into the barrels than alcohol. We don't have a lot of evaporation. Uh, mm -hmm. All of our entry proof is uh, 120. We don't play around you know with different entry proofs and sometimes you know we'll spike in fact we just pulled a barrel the other day that was a 125 but most of our barrels you know after five five or six years are going to be like 117 118 you know it's still it's still around that 120 entry proof. Very nice. well, you're saying and this one is more like a five-year-old or typically five-year-old is what well, you're yeah we in? we're aiming for about six years uh, with with Remus, this one is about six and a half. So we're okay. right right in the sweet spot. Because mm -hmm. the cool. impression for me is it feels like it drinks like an older bourbon. Mm -hmm. How rounded and integrated everything is. Um, yep. Yeah, it it just has the feel of something that's pushing more eight to ten years, in my opinion. You're right, and that's I think I think a couple of things. I think it's the it's the artistry of our blending. It the, the our capabilities, our distilling capabilities. It's our aging. Um, a lot of it is also, you know, the water. We, you know, we mm -hmm. sit on the Miami aquifer and you know, we pump, you know, pure filtered 50, 55 degree water in that, into that place every day. Um, and it, you know, makes for a very nice, nice whiskey. Yeah, it, it is very nice. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm, I wouldn't call this one entry level because it starts getting more complex, but I think I could see how I could sell it to my friends that way. You know, like it has yeah. very, very friendly, approachable flavors that, yep. that are, that are standing out in here that I don't think, I, I don't think anyone's really going to argue with. 
I'm really dig maybe have to dig for a little bit, but for me, there's a white chocolate note that comes in mm -hmm. on about the back half yep. to the last third of it that I'm really digging on this. Yeah. And it gets and it is it gets a little creamy at that point too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, the viscosity picks up a little bit. You know, Ben, I um you've got a really good palate. I um I didn't really I didn't really pre taste tonight. Um I'll be honest with you, it's been it's oh, it's been a while since I've had I've had just sat back to have a little bit of George Remus. And right. the thing that struck me tonight is this is incredibly soft. It is I mean, it is just, it's so sippable. And I think, you know, it's, I think it's the, the, the luck of the bottle, but I think, um, I just think that we're, you know, we are starting, you know, in our, third, our fourth year now. Um, we've been doing this a while, you know, for everybody else, but we're, you know, we really are focused. When we, when we blend for the profile, we're, we're really looking to integrate kind of the all that sweetness of, and some of that you know, some of the, pro, the 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 structure and the spice of rye, and we really want to get that not like you're shifting gears, right? But mm -hmm. that you're just smooth, you know, just smoothly moving into the into kind of that next phase. Um, we like to phrase that. As you know, a, I, I, I I just want to comment. I you know now that you say it, I'm like, yeah, that that's what it is. Yeah. I was going to say, when you're describing it that way, we've said it before, where there's like things that are a nice Sunday drive, and there's other things that feel like you're in a Ferrari and someone just slammed the gas pedal down. And when you have it all of a sudden, like you're, you're like in shock. Yeah. This, this is not that this is this nice, enjoyable kind of journey that you're going on where things just are revealing themselves as time goes on as you're sipping on it, which is nice. Yeah. Now, this is, this is nice. This is fun. Um, yeah, so just a little bit more about George um, George Remus. Um, you know, he he is an important figure in Cincinnati, and of course, Lawrenceburg's twenty miles from Cincinnati. Um, George's parents uh, emigrated from Germany when he was five, and they ultimately settled in Chicago, where his uncle was a pharmacist and. It ate 14, father became very ill and he went to work for his uncle in the pharmacy. Um, he ended up owning two pharmacies um, by the time he was 19. At the age of 21, he was very bored. He went to Chicago, University of Chicago Law School uh, and finished top of his class uh, in, in 18 months. Um, and he became a, you know, he, he, he kept the pharmacies and the family having his relatives work with them, but he became a uh, criminal defense lawyer uh, and was doing this for, for 20 years. And when uh, when Prohibition hit uh, and began, he started defending Booba. And he noticed two things about uh, his client. Um, he said, and, and George did speak in the third person. He said, um, <laughs> he said they are they have more money than God because they've come out of, you know, they've paid for their bail, just these wads of cash, right? And and George, George wanted to, you know, he wanted a, a nice lifestyle. But he, the second thing he said is they're really dumb. They're really stupid. <laughs> and he said, I, I can do this better than them. And he, and he literally set out to study uh, the, uh, the Volstead Act and found all the loopholes. So what he did is he packed up and he moved to Cincinnati. He moved to Cincinnati because it was within 200 miles of every padlock warehouse in America. Now it wasn't illegal to drink whiskey during prohibition, right? It was just illegal to make it and sell it. And so the only way you could get liquor besides illegally was through a, uh, a, a a, farm, a, a prescription, a, a yep. medicinal a liquor prescription, and so he, 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 re, you know, he, he uh, restarted his pharmacy business in Cincinnati. Uh, he bribed uh, two sets of people. He bribed the far, the other pharmacists, doctors, to, for him to be able to cut um, 
uh, cut the liquor, cut the spirits uh, into prescription strength. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he also bribed the tax authorities to give him preferential treatment on the barrel. Um, what he would do is he would collect all of the prescriptions and he'd head down to the local tax authority, local whiskey warehouse, and one of them was ours. So he did steal uh, from ours, our Lawrenceburg warehouses. And he would present these prescriptions. They'd unload the number of barrels that they needed. And his men in the truck would go off uh, to the pharmacy. Somewhere between the warehouse and the pharmacy, he had another set of his men rob his own men and take, <laughs> take the barrels to a secret hideaway in Cincinnati <laughs> called Death Valley Farm. And of course, you know, he was asked that his, his, own, his own orders would be stolen. So he'd have to go right back to the tax authorities, <laughs> prove that it had been robbed, get more barrels, and, and the virtuous cycle continued. So at, um, at one point, he was making something like $350,000 a month today's dollar. Okay. And, um, I was like, for back then, I'm like, shit, he owned everything. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and, and, he, and he threw wild parties. I mean, by the way, he didn't drink a drug. He was, he was completely stone cold sober. He was a heat sober. But he loved to party, and he had all these great, you know, uh, events at his house. Um, you know, at one party, he gave the men uh, diamond stick pens, and the wives were like, well, what about us? And he, he said, hey, well, go outside and look. And he bought new, uh, like, Oldsmobiles, you know, for, for all the women. Um, and <laughs> another party... He literally bought out the entire inventory of Cincinnati's largest jewelry store and just started handing out, um, handing out diamonds and jewels and, you know, to, and jewelry to all these people be, because he could, you know. I mean, Part of this image I'm getting in my head right now is like Oprah giving away stuff. He's like, and and you get a car and right. you get a car. He, he was <laughs> the original car. Oprah, you know. So anyway. <laughs> but um, I, I don't want to rush this too much, but I, I, you know, the reason I lead in that story is because of Remus Repeal Reserve. And, it, it, you know, because of all those parties he threw, uh, we also have records um, that he crossed paths with F. Scott Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. And I think rumor, but I think it's better than rumors, that he is supposedly the inspiration for F. Scott Fitzgerald, the great Gatsby. Because you think about Dick Gatsby, he was a pharmacist, loved to party, always hosted his wild elaborate events. But it's really uh, with Repeal Reserve that we honor the Art Deco and the, and the Gatsby and George. You can see that it's a very different bottle. It's very Art Deco. Um, it doesn't really look like your traditional uh, bourbon bottle. And we do that on purpose. Uh, because, you know, with Repeal Reserve, we, we really are trying to bring out the very best in, in what we do. Um, you know, so where uh, we're this, you know, with, with our regular George or everyday George is, um, you know, six years, but it's a profile. What we're trying to do with the Repeal Reserve is give you our best aged product, but every year it changes. The, the, the blending changes, the portion of the mash bills change, but it's always going to be about 10 to 12 years old. And, and I really think you get that the point across between like the difference, especially, I mean, with the bottle design about how yeah. fancier this looks. And when I see this, and like part of me when I first saw it a couple years ago, I thought that was like Papa Bear Hallis from, from the Bears for a second. The Bears, yeah. <laughs> I was like, he, he looks like they work together, you know, <laughs> like, they, like they got along. But I was going to say, and, and this one just looks like you said, like a lot classier. It really kind of fits the period you're going for. It is a nice bottle design on that one. Yeah, thank um, you. Before we, before we jump into that, I have a different question from the chat because I'm sorry, chat. I know I've been ignoring you a little bit, but that's my own. That's my fault. Um, Alan is wondering if you talk a little bit about your distilling equipment and your protocol, if that's possible. Okay. If you if you want to say no, you can tell us no. Well, I, people I, tell us I'm no not too. sure what protocols he. Um, Alan's is asking about, but we've got a lot of equipment. Um, you know, we 
you know, we, we do, you know, we've got, we've got stills and we've got fermenters and we've got lots and lots and lots of barrels. Um, you know, we do, uh, do both, uh, continuous and batch fermentation. Um, you know, we're, we're 24, seven, 65 operation on three shifts, seven days a week. Um, I can't tell you, you know, it's not Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays we're doing bourbon, and Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays we're doing rye. Uh, it, 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 it depends, you know, on the day and, and the customer and, and the grains. Um, I will tell you that with all the distilling we do, um, we, only, we only have 10 days worth of grain at the, at the distillery at any time. So we, we basically get, we get grain shipment every day. I was gonna say um, every, every day, or at least like twice a week. On on that note, just different question. Since you're mentioning how much different grain you're bringing in, how many barrels do you guys have in storage? About we, I know that's we a crap never story. talk about that. Okay, <laughs> never mind. It's never a mind. lot. <laughs> it's a lot. But when you were talking fourteen different masses, I'm like, what? And I'm like trying to math this out. I'm like, don't don't even don't even do it, Pat. Don't even do it. <laughs> well, first you'd have to know how big our you know, how many warehouses we have and how big our campus is. And, you know, and so look, we, we have a boatload of barrel, but you know, we've been, we've been putting down over the last five years, we've been as much as we put down for our customers, we have put uh, a significant amount of, 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 we've laid down a lot of whiskey for us as well. Uh, okay. For our ability to not only aid for future, future customers and future needs, also an age for, for us, for, for the brands group, um, for us to be able to innovate and be able to come out, you know, with with really good, new and exciting uh, brands. I mean, you think about it, I told you we were really just starting our fourth year. Um, you know, we've got, we, we're tasting through five different whiskeys tonight. I mean, and none of them, none of them is younger than five years old. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're we've always talked about we we're amazed by the quality that you turn out because we we do know where your stuff goes and a lot of times you can really tell the consistency of the quality is insanely impressive uh, I, I think is an understatement for anyone who understands everything that you guys are putting out for yourselves and for other people it's always it's always dead on um now i guess alan was talking about distillation sealing a thumper doubler or a coffee now you like i said if anything steps in the realm of you don't want now, to answer we, you we'll, do not have I mean, to yeah i mean I, we do use doublers i mean you know we've we've got a lot of different different equipment i mean <laughs> um when you come to when you come to lawrenceburg i mean we you know, we can shift you know to do just about anything and depending on what the what the what the customer wants you know as they said right. we can do batch we do we do we do continuous um you know we you know we have a significant amount of fermentation a uh, capability you know we can be in one room we could be fermenting a lot a lot of whiskey at, at any one in any one time um you know and and we're we're constantly you know, in the mornings, you know, we're dumping and filling uh, and moving, you know, moving barrels about. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty interesting operation. It's almost a ballet when you get right down to it. I was going to say with that many moving parts, all getting it to all move smooth is always a trick. Yeah. Um, when, when you got that much going on. Um, all right, let's jump back into the remix. Sorry. I just didn't want to no more of the chat for a bit there. That's all. All good. Yeah, so I think you know, for me, um, I, I think I think that well, wow, I'm getting, I am getting, I'm getting sourdough, I'm getting sweet cinnamon toast. This thing is just what is it? wild. And this is only fifty percent, and I've got my nose so down in the glass it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, I haven't even started. Are we talking about repeal reserve? I'm still on Remus. You want oh, to yeah, <laughs> we, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. I, I I got that one too. I can I can go backwards or forwards. I don't care. I can do, I can do anything. Let's, let's talk about Remus repeal reserve. I just want to um, I just want to stick this in the camera again. This is our our fourth series, okay? And 
every year we'll tell you exactly what the blend is, what mm -hmm. the mash bills are, and what the percent of the blend is. And then we, of course, we tell you that it's the night, it's the 2020 version. And I'll tell you a quick story before we start tasting here is that um, we were really, we were really scared the first time we put this out. We we're like, oh my God, you know, what will people think? And our first, um, our first release uh, in November of 2017 was 94 proof. It was a combination of, it was a four combination of our 21 and 36% mash bills from 2007 and 2008. And so it was, you know, it is basically eighth grade geometry. We're just, just doing all the percentages and everything in algebra. And, um, and we got really great response from people. I mean, they're like, yeah, it's great, love it, it's great, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and then every single review was semicolon, however, comma, Y94, you know? Shame <laughs> like, on you. Um, so they, you know, we, 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 we really listened to the, you know, and we actually, I called up a few of the, the guys that I knew who were writing and know them for a long time. And they said, look, Andy, uh, it's great, but this is a reserve and it better be at least a hundred proof because that's what people want. So, you know, I'm like, okay, uh, we just, from series two on, we've made it a hundred proof. It's because like, check, well, that's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, you know, stupid Andy, let's keep, keep, keep moving. But, but look, the team has had a great, every year, um, the team gets together and really it's the blending team who come in and they start, they start in January uh, with, um, with that year's uh, um, blend. Um, and we do, we go run through a lot of trials, we taste through the whole message here with, with repeal reserve. I just want to let everybody know is we're not trying in series four to replicate what we did in series three, nor did we try to replicate series two. Every year is different. We want to challenge the palate. We want to people to understand that bourbon, right? The bourbon, same age, the same mash, in different combinations can be wildly different in a good way, right? Wildly different and challenging. Because I think that's why we like whiskey, right? We're not, I mean, you look at everyone's back bar, you know, I've got, you know, I've got, you know, 50 bourbons, I got, you know, scotches and ryes and it's because we like it, right? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you don't wear the same color socks every day. So, so that's what we're trying to do is just to challenge the palate every year. And this year, as um, it's all, what is it, Andy? It's all 2008 uh, bourbon, and and we we use both the 21 and 36. It's about three quarters of the 21 percent, about a quarter, of, you know, 25 percent of the of the 36. So it, it, you're going to get a much sweeter bourbon to start, right? And um, and it's 12, 12, as I said, 12 years old. Um, and this one. I mean, from the get-go, people have been just raving I love, about it. I love yeah. the sweet, dusty note on the front. Like, yeah. there's some other times you get dusty notes, but this is, like, the underlying part of it is, like, rich and full. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm getting, I mean, I'm getting immediately, I'm getting, like, black plum. I'm getting this deep, dark fruit. Mm -hmm. I'm getting... Giving yeah, mean, oh, a lot of leather. Your your plum was an awesome note yeah. on that because I was I yeah. couldn't pick which one I was going to go with for that. Stone fruit, Patty. Stone fruit. Yeah. Oh, we had that <laughs> discussion the other <laughs> night. Yeah. yeah. Just, About what type here. of stone fruit do you mean, Pat? Yeah. <laughs> do you mean pears? Is that a large pit or a big yeah. one? <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Yeah, I get I get buttery caramel. I get the like mm. sugar on fruit, just like a. Yeah, fruit with a. Yeah, I get a lot of toffee. Yeah, and I get the leather, and there's a little tea at the at the end. Yeah, the leather, and then uh, there's a there's like a dense cherry and some chocolate. It's almost like a chocolate cherry cordial. Yeah. Yeah, second half. I can yeah. I can see why Fred was excited about this. Because this is uh, on the nose. 
you know, a lot of times you get three or four flavors. You, I'm going to, I'm going to say I can distinctly easily tell there's at least eight different scents coming off of this. If, if not more, like it's, yeah, there, there's, and a once lot again, of it's like, a, here. sorry, but I'm going to say once again, it's like, it's a rounded smell, you know, yeah. like you're, I'm not saying I'm hunting, but I'm going in there looking for more and it's not a problem to go back to the glass to, no. to, to look for more. And there's yeah, a little I mean, pipe tobacco there as well. Yeah, there's sort of a good rabbit hole here, right? You know, yeah. I mean, you can just dig around and it's like, oh, I, this, you know, find this one, find, find this, you know, find this flavor, find this shape. And it's, it's, it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And we're saying this is like 12 years. It was 2008. 2008. Okay. That's nice. It's rich and it's, it's not too bold. Once again, all of these are very, for me, very approachable whiskeys. Yeah. Like, at least, especially on the nose so far, very approachable when you're getting in there. This is just distinctively more complex. And this this one just got the best in class? Mm -hmm. At the World of Whiskey. Yes, it did. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our very first, uh, our first uh, series, uh, won in 2017, won, uh, won the Chairman's Trophy at you know, Paul Packles ultimate spirits challenge yeah and you can see how rich yeah. and dark it is and you know i mean we have good color but you know, this is this is uh the regular remus and this is how do i do that and you know and this you can, you can see, see that. the color difference with yeah it. there you go I mean, there, there's a distinctive the, the six more years really makes a difference <laughs> um you're right. It does. You know, there, there, you know, you can have it too young and you can have it too old, right? I think that the 12 for us right now is is really kind of a fun sweet spot. Um, and I will tell you, between five and six on regular remix, the huge difference. And that's why we're we're really shooting for six, six, six and a half. Okay. All right. I'm gonna sneak in here. Yeah. Oh damn, that's silky. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh wow. Okay, this is a fun ride. I'm just gonna say it already. I'm. That's got chocolate caramel. I almost even got like a little hint, uh, and this was just me, like of a banana. And once again, like it, I love how it just the rye fades, it, like just fades in, like well, when you're doing editing and. Those of you out there you can fade in or out. And this kind of fades in halfway through where it just kind of picks up. But it is, it's not spiky. It has nice, nice cinnamon, a um, little bit of cardamom note, and like a, more, a little more of a black pepper for me in, in the yep. spice. A lot of black pepper in this. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, you know, you, for me, the rye is literally on the edges. It's on the edge of my tongues. And it's it's really on the back edge of the of my upper palate, and it's like it is literally framing all that yeah. sweet toffee, rich caramel. You know, it's mm -hmm. almost like your Whitman sampler. You know, you just got all these rich, good sweet fruit and chocolate flavor. And it, yeah, like you mentioned, that's what it is like for me. It, it's the flavors in in the mouth. It's it's like the soft blanket of flavor. But then it has all those around the edge, and it's like, okay, they're all here. And it's nothing's trying to, nothing's trying to cut through your tongue and get and get into your cheeks. It's just all there and very layered. And that's uh, mm. it's, I don't want to say soft, but it's just very, it's very easy on, in the mouth. And at fifty percent, that's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, like what I would call it is supple. You know, it. Yeah. It, it's not soft, but it's you can you know it's. It's almost like, for me, it's like, you know, a comfortable down coat, right? You know, you know it's on you, but it, you can work it, right? And mm -hmm. that's how I'm feeling about, about the, yeah, the that's bourbon nice. here. So will there, will there be a, like a standard, is there a standardized for all of the in-house releases where it's like, okay, uh, normal Re Remus is always going to come out here if we make any changes to it. But Remus Repeal is always going to come out this time of year. Are these are um, just so you guys are spacing them out or is it just going to be whenever you guys get it is when it's going to hit? Mike, that that is a great question. Let me 
let me answer it um, just up front. So the Remus, what we would call the black or the portrait label, right, is it's our everyday bourbon. So we're, we're bottling that as we need to bottle, right? And the team, you know, we're, we're continuing with the plans and you know, the gang, the gang in Lawrenceburg, really, they already have the next barrels lined up and we know what proportion of 21 and 36% they want out of those barrels. We're good to go. With, um, with repeal reserve, the, the mandate, right, the, the stricture, if you will, is it, if we really want to keep it between 10 and 12 years old, we want, you know, we want to showcase the 21 and 36 percent, um, and it has to be 100, 100 proof. And after that, it's go to 10, Wh whatever you want, right? You know, you could do, you know, you could have a 10, 11, 12, and you could do, you know, you could have six, six variations on that in one bottle. That's okay. I mean, it's whatever the team wants wants to do. You know, because we're trying to every year showcase what this bourbon looks like and not and, and try not to basically repeat yourself, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, we are, you know, we, we've been, you know, we, we're going to get uh, more age. We're going to get different barrels, you know, where so we've been, you know, we've been adding as we, you know, as we've been adding to our own, our own inventories over the last few years. I mean, we're, we're really building a nice complement. Now, right now we don't have a lot of barrels, so we're, we don't, allocated right we're only in 16 markets for the business uh, but the we found the market can kind of you know they can order and they can reorder you know once so they've got it for about nine months you know and i think that's just about right and then and then your question about when do you release it we we originally and our intent was really to honor george on his birthday november 13th but we're, our demand is so big on this we said you know what like this year, we, we released it, we started shipping in August for September National Bourbon Heritage Month. Yep. So we're probably gonna be releasing in September moving forward. George wouldn't mind, you can still honor him on his birthday. No, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, you can um, have a bottle ready for his birthday at that point. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And, and then the third thing that um, I would just mention is, you know, last year on the 100th anniversary of the Volstead Act, we released the Volstead Bottled and Bond, yep. right? It was a one-time release, only 6,000 bottles. We're going to continue to do things like that, which would be cool. very cool. limited. Mm -hmm. um, and those will be hot. Those, we're, our, our focus is older than 12. So as we can pull together a, a 14 or 16-year-old that, you know, and it makes sense for the brand, we'll, we'll create something and uh, we'll come out with it. You know, and it's, it's really again to honor George, honor Prohibition, you know, honor honor really the the King Circle, which is our which is our um, our secret society. But it, it's really just to continue to, to build, build the brand and and to build advocacy uh, with our consumers. I mean, that's so. You know, we are working on another Volstead. It won't be called Volstead. I don't know when we're going to get it out, but. We already are working on some things um, because Volstead was a huge success. So we're we're looking forward to the next time. So, mm -hmm. do you guys have any any of your own stocks that are that are off limits to you because you know that they're going to be used for for some other projects? Well, any project done with the brands is through me, right? My team. So, um, it, you know, it's not off limits to me. <laughs> um, what I try to do, but that's the wrong way to say it. I work really closely, you know, with my with my compatriot on the sourced alcohol side, and we have, you know, they've got their, you know, we we're always we're always horse trading, right? I mean, you know, David Dykstra, who runs our sourced alcohol, he came to me two weeks ago. He says, uh, Andy, I've got a, you know, got a customer that needs a little bit of tech, and can you spare it? And I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, take that because what I need it for, I can replenish, you know, over the next couple of years. Um, you know, we just had this conversation with one of our rides, you know, during the week. So we're we're very, I mean, our culture at MGP is incredibly collegial and it and it's very collaborative. 
So um, I, I know a lot of companies will say that. I mean, we do live it. I mean, we're it's it's not a yours versus mine because we spend a lot of time I mean, every month in our business I mean, We're we're going through the number of barrels. Who needs what? You know, you're still going to you know use this allotment project. Yes, we are. You know, so we're we're constantly kind of you know working through this. But you know, as as the opportunity presents itself, we're gonna we're gonna jump on it and take advantage of you know our ability to make good make good whiskeys. So in in like along with the collaboration, so ex- externally, like it's a company like High West that, that takes takes the very good whiskey they got from you and they did their own nice things with that and eventually they're going to go off on their own making all their own do you do you guys go in with them and, and do you kind of do you help them uh or is it like you know, like you're going to use our stuff for this amount of time and then you're on your own or do, do you guys oh, no, work no, no. with the uh, uh, distillers yeah mike that's a great question so, you know our i mean we still have a great relationship with you know with high west with constellation we have a great relationship with bacardi and um, and Angel's Envy, um, you know, so our, our, um, relationship, whether they're craft, whether startup craft, you know, or multinationals, I mean, they, they run the gamut and, and we, you know, we don't have a cutter approach. I mean, one startup, you know, may need, you know, one mash bill, a craft group might need, you know, three mash bills, a craft, you know, uh, customer, you know, suddenly finds one of his brands is going through the roof. And he might, you know, say, well, like, I've just laid down, you know, I've got new distillate laying down, but do you have any, you know, two, three or four year old or three, four or five year old, you know, I will work with them. I mean, that's, that's what the business is about. And, and for, for me, you know, for our brands, we have new distillate and we have one year, two year, three, you know, so we, you know, we can go pick through the library to, um, you know, to tinker and, and, you know, and just start working on some new, uh, some new brands. I mean, you know, and the Rack House series was really about a few orphan barrels and a couple of opportunities and a little bit of horse trading. And, you know, we've got, we've got ourselves a brand. <clears throat> now you said circle of kings before now t- totally off topic but is that what the the board refers to themselves as oh no no because no. <laughs> <laughs> if i if i was in there i, I might do that i would be uh, this is the secret yeah. for the king's circle <laughs> we're just yeah. the board members we- or no the board is just you know you're, you're, you're yeah no you're yes ma'am and no ma'am uh, 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 no we the um no, the King Circle is our loyalty club that anybody can sign up for at georgeremus.com. Um, George had a group of loyal henchmen um, who kept the secret, who kept the business running. He called that the circle. And, um, and we honor him by renamed by calling our loyalty club the King Circle. I dig it. Because it was the King of the I dig it. Uh, um, um, can I oh, take sorry. a moment and just? Yep. Sorry. No, go ahead. I put, can I take a moment just to go into what I'm getting here out of this Remus yeah, Repeal yeah. Reserve? Yeah, I was, I was they, waiting they, for they you to do it. I, I saw you reflecting. Yeah. Yeah. No. Th- this is all right. My wife is Swiss. I get the opportunity because of family there to uh, partake of a lot of wonderful Swiss treats, chocolate especially. And there's this specific chocolate. Uh, they take a dark, dark chocolate. Um, and inside is a uh, Williams, which is a pear brandy. And so this is like, if you take that chocolate and you put it in your mouth, you don't bite it. You just let the chocolate begin to melt and it begins to coat your mouth. And then, it, and then that brandy gets released blending with the chocolate, it just coat your mouth with there's, there's this hint of, to me of the pear brandy in there with the, with the dark chocolate coating. And they encase that brandy. There's a little shell of uh, sugar in there, so you get that sugary sweetness along with the dark chocolate and the pear brandy. And that—that's what I'm experiencing in this whiskey, and it's—it's it's just amazing. I'd agree. I'd say a hint of coffee too, just because I'm. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's leather. There's there's all the things you guys talked about. But that that was something I'm starting to experience with this, and it's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, this oh, is. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're. 
I just, just poured a little bit of extra. You know, for me, I just suddenly got that pop of plum or, you know, stone fruit that just so bright. And all of a sudden it just, just sort of evaporates into this, you know, luscious bark. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah, man, rich. Just, <laughs> Oh my God, this is it, good. It's lovely. <laughs> it is what's what it, 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 it is. This, yeah. this is one of the few times that I'm and I'm and I'll say it. I'm happy the bottles at my house and I gave away samples. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that one. I'm, I'm I'm really happy about that. This is well. Um, this is quality. For, for Patrick and Mike, we you know we we do uh, we do currently uh, do business in Wisconsin mm -hmm. and in Minnesota and in uh, Missouri. Um, and we're our plan literally is to go to South Carolina next year. So we're okay. we're working nice. on on trying to trying to bribe a couple of you know in a good way, a couple of distributors to try to work with us. Um, but uh, you know our, our goal is uh, to to really start to branch uh, west and east next year. Yeah, we, there there's a lot of places in Wisconsin where they do you guys they do barrel picks of Remus and other stuff. And I know Bourbon and Banter is releasing one in a day or two that yep. they have, and it's. There, there, there's a lot of respect for what's going on. I've, I, I see a lot of the bottles, and I, I, you always like the bottle. I like the store picks because they have the special pictures. You know, like with the, the, sometimes those are absolutely hysterical, and they might might get me to buy the bottle. I might have anyways, but sometimes you see you're like <laughs> I'm on the same wavelength well, as this let, guy. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, uh, let me offer a shameless commercial plug here. Um, and you mentioned the barrel pick. We. Uh, this this month, well, August and September, we're, we are releasing our very first barrel pick for both George Remus and for Rossville Union. And um, the George Remus uh, pick uh, barrel program uh, is going to be cask strength. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, four to six year old barrels. Uh, you, you pick blind, you taste blind. Um, and uh, we deconstructed you know, I told you the George Remus is 21 and 36 percent mash bills. We we're very kind of, you know, we got a lot of requests the last couple of years. We want, you know, when are you going to come out with a barrel program? When are you going to come out with a barrel program? I kept trying to, you know, we kept saying to everybody, well, remember we got two mash bills in here. And like, well, we don't care. We want a barrel. It was like, well, you don't put two mash bills in a barrel. <laughs> and um, so, so we deconstructed uh, and it was, I mean, it was a huge success. I mean, we, we sold, so many barrels between January 15th and literally March 18th when COVID hit. We had just closed the sales. And it was interesting. We got we, we we called all of our customers. Said, "Look, we know COVID, and you know, sort of look into the crystal ball, and businesses are going to be the same." They're like, "I still want my barrel. Still want my barrel. I want my MGV barrel." So, so we released um, really starting mid-August. Started shipping Remus barrels. We finished up right after Labor Day, and we've started in on the Russell barrels that are shipping this month. And that one is going to be bottled and bond. By the, way. Okay. the the Russell unit will be bottled and bond, so hundred proof. But we're we're going to do uh, we're going to do the barrel pick for this next year as well, as well as Russell Union. Um, nice. Because people had so much fun with it. Well, and it is, and and that's especially with your blending. It is really nice. But sometimes, like you said, like even if it is a blend, like that single barrel kind of barrel proof version is like you just you get something a little a twist that's different on it, you know, like a little different stamp for each of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. All the bottles are custom that we, we have a custom label on the side. Uh, the ABB ABB because it's it's cast strength. It has to be approved at building, so it's all handwritten. Um, so if you find one in your neighborhood, pick it up because it's. They are, they are very good. Yeah, I've I've heard some good things from some people that had the had the barrel proof uh, remix. And, and, and we and we did not overprice. So anyway. No, no, Ed, I didn't. I don't think you guys have on any of the stuff you've had. You guys are usually very reasonable with what's up. Um, before we move on to the Rossville, uh, AJ Lopez is wondering if um, you're good, planning on doing more toasted oak finished bourbons. Um, that is a great question. He and says the, it's damn good. Yeah. <laughs> well, for us, we are um, we are in the process of testing some barrel finishes right now. Um, so the answer is we'd love to. A B, 
we're not there yet. So, we, you know, we really do need to sort of uh, walk, you know, crawl before we walk here. But we're working, we're working on a couple of different things. Um, and yeah, it's it's in the offing, right? It's in it's in the future. I think what we would really like to do is to um, finish rolling out to the rest of the country, and then start to start to backfill with innovation. And again, mm-hmm. if I can be really commercially crass, I just want to show you guys one thing that we haven't even talked about uh, this this uh, series. Um, but one of the other things that happened to us uh, in March, literally the week that COVID hit, is we um, we closed on uh, our latest, our newest acquisition, which was a gin brand out mm-hmm. of Washington, D.C. It was a New Columbia Distillers. Take it. And um, we, um, we're not, you know, we're not going to taste, but we're, you know, we, um, this is Green Hat Gin, oh. comes out of Washington, D.C., um, we only sell it now in uh, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Um, but it, this thing is its a great story. Again, it's a prohibition gin. Uh, it's really based uh, upon the story of a guy named George Cassidy, who wore a green fedora during prohibition. He was the bootlegger to Congress. Um, and so our goal here is to, is to take this to the rest of our uh, rest of our market. I know you guys are whiskey guys, but... Yeah. Is it a lot of dry? Love gin. We we just started getting into gin a little bit since we were on the show. I, th- I yeah. think all of us had the the bad gin experience where like my mother <laughs> handed me a, a gin and tonic and it tasted like pine salt and I was like I'm never I'm not going back. Um, but we've had some that have been pretty impressive lately and kind of turned my head yeah. back that that that's something we should look into. Um, is it a is it a London dry or is it, it more it like is, the it new is world? A London, it is a London style gin. It's not okay. a it's not a uh, uh, compound gin. Um, okay. It you know it's been grain it has been grain to glass. Uh, it is distilled in Washington D.C. Actually, where I grew up, um, mm. and um, and it's uh, it, it's a, it has a great following there in the district. Um, and and we you know when we show it around to, to people they're like wow, that's really cool so uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that next year but that's one of the when we talk about what else are you going to do well we just we just bought this this great little distillery with a great brand and we can't roll it out because no one's doing you know no one's taking on new business this year everybody's been quarantined so you know we've got all this you know we we have pent up demand you know <laughs> I can't even take our gin so uh, so we're trying to we're trying to get that. Thing but um, I digress. Let's do this. Let's talk about our rise, right? Yes. So MGP, famous for rye. This is Rossville Union, master crafted straight straight rye whiskey. And we have we have two expressions right now. We have our and uh, excluding the barrel pick, we have our master craft at ninety four, and we have our barrel strength at come on, Andy. Um, at 112.6. Okay, good. Thank you. So, um, here's what I want the, the message I want to send about the product, and then I'll tell you about the brand. That um, we can select uh, each of these cues, these two different variations, are not like, oh, this is the cast strength of the other one. We literally hand select the barrels for barrel proof before blending. We hand select the barrels for Mastercraft before we blend. And we focus on on our two kind of famous rye uh, mash bills. One is, the, of course, the 95.5, mm-hmm. um, and the other one is our 51% rye. Um, this one is uh, 51% uh, rye and uh, 45 uh, corn and 4% malted barley. And we blend them in different proportions, which is why we pick different barrels, because with Mastercraft, we are really focused on the best cocktail rye you can buy. I mean, it's great to step. I mean, this is 94. Um, these are both about seven years old, uh, the whiskeys. And we want to, um, we really want people to sort of, you know, be able to enjoy the rye, uh, not lose the taste in the cocktail, have a good experience. Now, quick story about, uh, what, why do you call it Rossville Union? Rossville mm-hmm. Union. 
Roscoe is the original name of the distillery, founded in 1847 by George Ross of Cincinnati. And we have gone back to our roots to, to really, you know, talk about why we are the masters of rye because in 1847 and in fact we have records dating back to 1809 of rye distillation on our property in lawrenceburg so 211 years we you know we someone right there in little lawrenceburg where the site of the distillery has been distilling rye but it was really george george who actually he sold the seagrams after after the yeah. Uh, after the, the the you know after prohibition, um, I could, couldn't couldn't carry on. But we honor we honor George with with Rossville Union, and so we have two expressions. As I said, the the Master Craft ninety four and then the Barrel Strength. Um, what you know? One of the things, a couple of things. You know, and when you talk about MGP Rye, there is a distinctive. Um, there are a couple of distinctive things about our rye. You know, one, they're soft. Um, two, you you will get a dill note on the on the on the you know on the nose, not in the taste, but it's that acetic acid that actually is released with from the protein. And I think it's because of the way we handle it. The, the you know sort of the softer softer fermentation, not burning it, really brings out a lot of different uh, characteristics on the rye. I'm getting like a, like a old Western saloon, but then there's this weird like hint of cotton candy coming through, like a, just the sweetness. Old Western, you mean like, like, or do the boots have spurs on them or what? Yes, I mean, yes. Boots have spurs on them. Boots have spurs on them. It's <laughs> the, the, the kind of saloon that you can still kind of like feel the air come through the, come through the walls type, type of deal, but. Well, sort of like. Plenty of whistling in the background. A little, bit, a little bit of that. A little bit of that. Western, yeah. so, so, sometimes I go places rather than smell things. It happens. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> right. It's a journey. What I'm getting with this is a lot of um, orange, you know, orange peel. Um, I like when you said burnt with the orange because it, it's got yeah. just a little bit of earthy aroma kind of kind of covering that up. Well, you know, like when you when you torch you know uh, uh, the oil right when you burn the oil you know uh, on an orange peel get that kind of flambe from it that's, that's what mm -hmm. I get. I always get a little apricot on the MGP rye. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll get a lot of that. I get a hint of strawberry jam in there. Mm -hmm. Once again, for being forty-seven, I'm not even I. I couldn't. There's no alcohol smell in here whatsoever. Not not one tiny bit. I couldn't tell you that was in here at all from this. It was well, really bright and fresh at first in the glass, but the more time I've got in here, it's it's really developing a lot more. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna taste it. Hmm. The heat kicks up a little bit quicker in this one with the rye spice. It's not it's not overly aggressive for a rye. I mean, we've all had the rye that kind of slaps you around the room. This is not that, but it's definitely more intense than the bourbons. You can kind of feel when that kind of kind of pulls up into it. Oh. You know, we purposely wanted to focus on the softness of the rye rather than the, um, you know, the the uh, <laughs> the manliness of the ride. Because when we were when we were talking to consumers, it's really interesting. We were talking to a lot of you know men and women, young and old, you know, just starting off, you know, big collectors. But you know, sort of when we kind of got to the center of gravity around rye, I mean, everybody everybody could talk for hours about about bourbon. When we got to rye, it was really just kind of the 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 older drinkers and whiskey drinkers and collectors really appreciate rye but yet the younger the younger drinkers they were really into cocktail mm -hmm. and so we were like oh yeah right you know Manhattan's phenomenal oh yeah just rye makes the best cocktail and so our, our our moderator who has personal experience in the industry 
um, mm. sort of stop them and say, let's separate the cocktail from the spirit. What about rye? And this one guy, a young guy, you know, grimace. You know, you just you could just see him through the glass. He's like, oh, I don't want to really talk about this. And so the moderate still picks on him. And says, well, What's wrong? He goes, You know, he goes, Well, I really like cocktails, but I don't really like rye. And he goes, Well, why? I mean, why would you? You know, you, you drink it because you like the cocktail, right? He goes, Yeah. He goes, Well, why do you like the spirit? He goes, Because it. And you know, and it was at that minute where I mean, we're sitting here listening to this, and we, we realized, oh my gosh, you know, it. I get it, right? I mean, you know, it's like people don't like red wine, you know, in their twenties because they've been drinking really sweet stuff, and they don't like the tannins, and and it's different, right? So it's like, okay, how do we make how do we make a softer rye? How do we get this rye so approachable, but yet not lose its characteristic? Yeah. And when they when they try it, they're like, "Yeah, I can do this, right?" Mm-hmm. This is what we this is what we were aiming. For. Yeah, it's it's very it's it's a it's buttery soft going in, and then it's like it melts, and then all the flavors coming down with it. That's nice. Uh, kind of like like you said, yeah. it's kind of it picks up, man. It just like yeah. it, it really increases in in what's going on there. I I, I really dig it. So you, you know that this is a rye because you're getting that you're getting those rye spices right on the back of your of your of your tongue and your throat and you're getting that, that cumin and that cardamom and that cinnamon, all those great baking spices. But you're also getting that that kind of that softness, right? That uh it's a you know it's a mellowness to it that that I think is a little bit like the um like toffee, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and and it just mellows it I out. Was gonna, I was gonna say it was almost like no, I, was, I was thinking caramel, not toffee, like a little caramel caramel blanket over the top of it that just kind of dampens it down a bit, mm-hmm. like just softens those things and really kind of kind of works it back around. I, I I'm gonna be honest. I I had this a couple years, like a year or two ago. I I, I like this this version of it. A lot better than I did the. I don't want to say the original version. I don't know what it is, but I like this a lot. I was gonna say the other one I was, I liked, but I wasn't like excited yeah. about this. I'm yeah. pretty excited about for where this one is at. This is yeah, I'm really happy with this. Well, we with every bottling on each of these, we tell you how many barrels we use. So, mm-hmm. um, and we're not trying to like small batch and all that. What we're trying to do is be very transparent. And say okay. We used 83 barrels, or we used 159 barrels to, you know, to make make master craft or make make barrels barrel strength, cast strength, so that you know that you know we we did we did hand select. So I have a question for you because you you said said the word I was going to ask this question later. You you guys are very transparent with a lot of stuff that you guys put out. So without. Without saying anything, whatever. I mean, how, do you have an opinion, or how do you feel about the people not being transparent about the fact that they are sourcing from you, even though people know it? Well, you know, it's really you know each each brand needs to stand on its own, and they need to make make their own decisions, right? I mean, I, I don't, I, I personally don't have an opinion. I mean, you know, we have NDAs with with all of of our customers. And we will only talk about, you know, the only brands I've mentioned tonight are the brands that have mentioned us first. I mean, we, you know, right. I, I won't, you know, it, we got to let them build their brands the way they feel it's right. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, whatever their value system is, whatever their strategies are. I can tell you that the value system for MGP and MGP brand is, is again, I like said, right, provenance and authenticity. You can't have authenticity if you're not transparent. Right. So, you know, we're going to be out there. We're going to tell you the things we can tell you. We're an open book. Right. Um, and it's most stuff. Right. It's about 90 percent of the stuff. Um, but, you know, we can't we're not going to tell you how many barrels because, you know, a lot of those barrels are our customers barrels. Right. And mm-hmm. maybe, you know, they don't want people to know. And yet we'll, we'll, we'll tell you the stories. We'll we'll tell you how we make it. We'll tell you, you know, what the mash bills are. We'll give you the aging, you know, our aging protocols, we'll give you our entry proof. Because at the end of the day, you know, the more you know, the more you're going to enjoy the product. Mm-hmm. That's as simple as that. Yeah. 
No. And, I, I, and kind of along Mike's question is, did you suffer a lot of backlash uh, f- when some of those things came up? Because w- we feel that that should have been on the company itself. Like you were saying, like that was that was on you. You were building your own brand. You, we supplied it. We walked away. Um, and we feel like the backlash should go on to the, the people not being honest in, in that instance. Um, and like you said, it's their choice. But did you guys suffer a, a, like no. a little whip? Okay, good, good. No, that, that no was whiplash. A, no whiplash coming yeah. back off of something like no. that. Good, good. Uh, that would be something I'd be concerned about. You know, I'm like, that's, it, yeah. it, it would be unfair to you um, if, if that's what was going on, you know, because you guys are extremely transparent with what you're doing and what you're choosing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all, all we can do is the best we can, right? As simple as that. So, so um, nice. I kind of kind of moved on to uh, the barrel to proof. The barrel proof. Yeah. All right, and man. um, I hope I hope you all see that there is a marked transition. Yeah. Be- okay, and that's intentional, right? Yeah. Where we have a really good cocktail uh, rye in Mastercraft. This is a sipping rye. This is. For everybody who said, you know, let's man up. Let's. I want it big. I like it bold. We're going to give you big and bold, but we're going to do it our way, right? It, we won't kill you, um, but we're going to give you a lot of complexity around this. So, again, it's cast strength. It is in different proportions than Mastercraft, but it still has 95.5 and the 51% rise um, melded, melded together. So yeah, you. I mean, the first thing you got is this is big, right? It is big. right. I mean, literally big in caramel, your face. Big caramel toffee for me, like just rolling, rolling up yeah. to my nose before I even get there. I'm getting a lot of dill on this. All right, I mean, this is like rye, rye, rye. A lot of black pepper. Definitely black pepper. I'm getting a lot. Of, yeah. I'm getting a little dill. I'm. I'm. I. For some reason, my my nose glosses over dill, like not completely. Like I just get hints when other people get like this really deep dill in some things that attacks them. I'm always like, not that bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of the same way, Patrick. I mean, it, I get hints of it, but it, it doesn't overpower my senses. I'm loving the black pepper note in this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it it sneaks its way up through through the sweetness and man cardamom yeah definitely hit a cardamom in there sorry I'll stop talking I'll let Mike or Ben talk for a second I just I get I get in a realm when I'm sniffing and then I just kind of go off in my own realm for a second yeah I get more citrus off this one than the other one but yeah the pepper mm. And it's the thing. I, the thing I like about it is, uh, which you know, it's the same with bourbons too. Sometimes people want a bourbon that smacks them around, but this isn't. This is not the rye that you know. This rye is going to grab you by the throat and shake you around <laughs> and let you know who's boss. It's it's very it's strong, but it's not. Um, it's like a, a gentlemanly greeting first instead of I'm going to punch you in the face and then we're going to talk. Right. You know, as, this is a oh. firm handshake. Yes. You know, without I, crushing your knuckles. I jump to a sip of it, and I get a little, and I get the dill on, like, the last third, where it picks up for a second. I was going to say, but not as much as the nose, but I definitely got it in, in the palate of where that was. And, oh, it was really, not, no, I have to go back. It was really nice on the first set here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And notes jumping in there's leather and bay leaf. Yeah, mm-hmm. I get a lot of bay leaf. That's an excellent the bay leaf and that cardamom, that leather. I'm also getting, again, that black pepper is for me is just like the keel on the boat is just right through the entire palate. It does, and the leather is right because that's just where I was getting a nice mix of leather and and the pepper spice. Yeah, in the leather. Yeah, I just picked oh. that up, Mike. I got you know I got like lemon zest on the nose. Mm. Man, that that peppercorn yeah. for me is almost like a. The pepper, it's like a peppercorn, a creamy peppercorn reduction sauce. Mm-hmm. Kind of, there's a creaminess to it, but you yeah. still, it rounds off a little bit of heat from that pepper, but it's still there, and you still get all the flavors of it, and it's... Yeah. Uh, admittedly, we're five, you know, we're five samples in here, but 
yeah. there is still that, like like you said, there's that creaminess part of it. That's not it's not the drying rye. No, it's just, it's it's just nice and layered mm. and stays with you. This I was getting so a little good. spearmint on the on the kick up when the rye starts, or like a, just a hint of mint in there as well too. Yeah, you will get yeah. mint. You will get mint. Uh, you will get bay leaf. You'll get basil. I mean, it's very it's yeah. vegetable in a good way, right? Yeah. I mean, and I'm getting just a, a light tingle on the outs on the outside edges of my tongue, like not yeah. to tip, but like the edges on the way back. It's where I'm getting the heat and the rice by sticking around again. And that happened in another one, too. I, does, does that happen with a lot of the whiskeys where the rye kind of pulls out to the side and leaves um, kind of the other flavors in the middle? I'm, sorry, I'm going to have to go back I, and do a whole other tasting tonight. Uh, yeah. Afterwards. <laughs> you know, salt is on the edge, right? Mm -hmm. Tongue and sweet is in the center. And mm. Generally. And so, you know, you've got... The thing about rye, rye is more acidic, right? The things we've been talking about are, are acid base. So, salt, acid is going to really grab the external part of your palate. And I'm getting a little bit of that burnt orange, like we talked about on the original, hidden in here as well, too. This, yeah. shit, there's a lot of. Okay, this and the repeal have a lot going on this this is why i like these two releases from you guys because like i usually tell people like we are we're typically a craft whiskey show these releases i i don't want to say are like your craft whiskey but they're your unique spin on things you know like the extra touch that other places don't do when they release it and you can really tell um that you're putting that they're they're definitely way more complex than an average release. These are really sweet. and quick question. I know that the repeal is about eighty five. How much is the barrel proof Rossville? Is that one? So yeah, why not just just give you some su suggested retails up the line? So our eight and stand suggested retail is twenty nine ninety nine. Oh, I got a deal. And yeah, and they did. Oh, yeah, probably did. And, there, uh, there, was, there was one <laughs> store last year. I I. I and they're known for this every now and then they'll they just have good sales and i, th I think i picked up like three bottles for like 16 18 dollars wow. whatever they were doing that, that's and really I, good. But there's once i just walked through and i'm like well i guess we'll find out about you and then you know try it with friends on friday night and I'm like i'm going back on saturday i need to pick up a couple more bottles yeah oh that was nice um the mm. uh the george remus mainline and mastercraft are both we mainline those at 39.99 oh really affordable Really and then, uh, and then the Remus uh, Repeal Reserve is uh, is suggested eighty four ninety nine. You can sometimes get it seventy nine ninety nine. Um, and then Barrel Proof is uh, SRP is fifty nine ninety nine. Oh wow! So yeah, that... yeah we're, we're not you know I think they're very fair pricing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Absolutely. you're and you're you're landing all in the ballpark of what well usually what we say with the, the American whiskeys is once you once you get above a hundred people start and I know I do too a little bit. I get a little suspect of what's going yeah. on. You know, I get hesitant to try rather than just let it out there. For sixty for sixty bucks for the Rossell Union, that's an impressive ride for sixty dollars. That is, this is really nice for sixty bucks, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the repeal. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be going back to that. Uh, <laughs> all, all these, all your, all yours have a very friendly price point where you, it looks like you're trying to sell to the consumer rather than demand the consumer buy your product. Which you know there are other places where things will show up and they're like, it's worth a hundred and. Forty dollars or hundred and fifty dollars for our release, and it's like six-year-old whiskey, and you're like, yeah. I just, Why? I'm, I'm having a hard time grasping. I'm like, you, you don't even have a cool bottle, you know? Like if you, <laughs> if you had a cool bottle, you had something, you know, like to get me, yeah. you know? Oh, they're cool. They don't charge a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's like I, I believe you spent twenty dollars on the bottle. I, I see where this is coming, you know, like yeah. shit, shit like that. But well, no, you go ahead. Sorry, I didn't you let also for those of you who are might be interested in going out and shopping the uh, single barrels um 
the George Remus single barrel, since it's cast strength, we've also priced that at fifty nine ninety nine. Oh wow! So it'll you know it so it pairs up nicely with barrel with the barrel of uh, the cast strength of Rossville Union, and then the Rossville Union uh, bottle and bond barrel is uh, forty nine ninety nine. So oh, wow. with, with Rossville, you got thirty nine, forty nine, fifty nine. You know, take your pick. Um, so we got twenty nine ninety nine on Aiden Sand, and then for for Remus, you've got thirty nine, fifty nine. Uh, let's call it, you know, seventy nine. You know, I mean, yeah. just for for the so, Yeah, just so you can understand that we have. I mean, because they're older, you know, uh, more age. Uh, higher, higher ABVs. You know, they're gonna, you're going to pay a little bit more, but but it's logical, right? I mean, we're not. Yeah. You know, it's a three series, five series, seven series BMW. You know what you're getting. Right? If you were even talking to anyone who who vaguely knew about it, you'd be like, "There's one that's six years, and there's one that's twelve years, and it's only like twenty, thirty dollars difference." You'd be like, "Oh, oh, really?" You know, <laughs> you know, like I, I was expecting a you know a much bigger jump in that because mm-hmm. when you're talking about other whis- uh, whiskeys in general that from Kentucky, let's say they get to be 12, 13 years old, they all of a sudden, at least on the on the original market, start demanding that much, and on the secondary, they can be oh, yeah, they triple, effing yeah. ridiculous. So that they're just they're just crazy. We we want people to like our brands and come back and buy. That's what we want, you know, because you can always get another bottle of it. And you know, we we you know we're. We're planning to be here for for a long time, and uh, we're really proud of what we do. And we really are, you know, we love that you ask us to, you know, shows such as yours, and uh, it's fun. And we, you know, we, we want people to have a good time. Yeah, we don't want it to be a burden. And it I'm looking like, forward uh, to you guys hitting South Carolina. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And we uh, we had another a friend of the show who works at, as an ambassador at Dancing Goat, and he they have a very similar approach like we want you to be able to go back and buy another bottle and not be concerned when you walk in the liquor store you know like oh i you know i have to save this for just a special occasion or just something else because you bought it that way you want to be able to go back for whatever you're doing that week and be like i can grab this and go home and and feel really happy about it you know i'm with Um, you so is there any chance that you guys will put your your uh mgp light whiskey on the market under your own label? Oh, just a light whiskey? Yeah. That's a great question. No one's ever asked that before, Mike. Um, I've, I've, I've had it from uh, from other people who have who have sourced it. It is mm-hmm. it is really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. I got a sample yeah. of that too, so I'm not gonna because it's really old. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, but it, but it's just it's it's not. Uh, I know the name probably keeps some people away from it, but once you try it, you're like, okay, there is something kind of nice going on here uh yeah. and it's just very pleasant well the reason why we call it like whiskey is because someone already somebody already took the name scotch right i mean yeah. you know <laughs> I mean, that's what scotch is it's like whiskey you know i mean it's, it's been aged in a used barrel <laughs> you know um you know you may have given us a really good idea i, I i've got to look into that you know <laughs> Yeah, I don't we, know. Well, you know, I do like the light whiskey, though. It's really, it's really good. It, it is, yeah. And Out of all the mash bills you guys do, do you have a personal favorite? My, my personal favorite? Mm-hmm. That's a great question. Um, yes, I do. Um, and I will tell you that this mash bill, it's a rye mash bill. And we did, we did release it in the single barrel this year. Okay. Uh, it's our 51 rye, 49 malted barley, and it wow. is yeah. It's I really saw that good. one, and that that's the one that really caught my attention. Like I would love to try that. That that percentage of barley to the rye that sounds really amazing. Well, yeah. we're working on some secret things for that for that mash bill in the, in the next few years. The more people can try it. Are you thinking of doing pretty. anything that would be in an all malt at some point? Yeah, you know, we we we've we've been doing some experimentations, like just like the uh, you had a, uh, one of your uh, one of your viewers asked about uh, barrel finish. We're working on barrel finish. We're working on. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing on on 
um, barrel char because you know we have a custom char in our barrels now, two on the staves and four on the heads. But um, we're doing different uh, different uh, wood finishes. We're working on that. Um, you know, we're 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 constantly experimenting. You know, and for for us on, on the brand team. You know, we've got a really nice little portfolio. We just want to get it out there so that we can, you know, get to the next, you know, get to the next thing. But it's, it's yeah. fun. When you mentioned, oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, Annie. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. When you were mentioning the number two char on the sides, we've run into that a few times this year where people were using number two chars. And now that you mentioned it, and I feel like an ass for not picking this out beforehand we're noticing that number two seem to have this very nice rounded appeal to the whiskey itself even if it is only like a two or a four year old version of what's coming out uh, that and like maybe some toasted heads or other things to it are i guess we're seeing that number two is actually becoming very exciting for us where i think for myself i was always thinking threes and fours were kind of more my jam before and I'm starting to see like a number two char as like being a really exciting finish that makes things very cohesive. I think. Well, you know, we have a four char on the heads, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting, you're getting a lot of deep char. You're getting, you know, lighter, if you will. Um, and I, I also think, you know, with with barrel aging, I spent many years in the wine industry. You know, with barrel aging, you've got to also think about the the temperature, the environment in which it's in as well, because that plays a huge, huge part in, in, you know, in how much those barrels breathe, right? Because it isn't so much that it's charred, it's like, what's the expansion and contraction? How much of that great distillate is going into the, into the wood? How much is getting expressed out? How often is that happening? Because that's where the magic, that's, that's where the whiskey is made. So... You know we're um, we're we're doing some experiments, and um, you know we're we're constantly trying to figure out you know what's what's that next right thing for us. Whatever. I, with some of the stuff, the, the finishing and the other stuff you're talking about, I'm I'm excited to when those things come to fruition. Not that I'm not excited yeah. about what you got out. I'm I'm loving the the foolproof versions of both of these, um, but just since we've been playing with sherries and ports and other finishes um yeah i there there's a lot of, and seth i don't know the the finishing barrel thing is just is blowing up in the last like two or three years in my mind i know it went into process earlier but what some people are starting to churn out and that extra layer of complexity you're getting out of it i'm really excited to see where some of these go just because yeah. it, it, it is you you have a wonderful base and anytime you have a wonderful base, it's neat to see see it change and be altered and hit those couple extra layers. Um, yeah, well, all we need is time and just a few resources, and we'll <laughs> get it. We'll get to it. All good. That's, that's fair. Um, I'm gonna pour myself one last little sip here, but we have had you on way past when our typical hour, which is fine by us, but I don't want to. I don't want to eat into your night too, too much anymore. And yeah, I want you to be able to get to sleep and get to work tomorrow. No, it's all good. <laughs> I, I just want to tell you guys, it is, this has been so much fun for me. I mean, this has been a great time. I was looking at the clock like, oh my gosh, I've been talking too much. I apologize. Uh, but it is just so much fun to share our story with you all. And, and you guys, thank you for your, your great comments and your great taste. I mean, you guys all have great palates and noses. And I've, I've learned a lot too tonight. Thank you very much. No, we appreciate it. Yeah, we, I, I do yeah. have to say because we do this from time to time, I I pour the same amount of Are all of the cheater? samples in the one. God, how is that cheating? You because know I just do it. You after. you know we do. I have this. six whiskeys and I have to fucks with it now. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the blend the blend is great. <laughs> yes, Mike. Let me ask you something. For for yours, I'm getting just, it's like intense orange and chocolate. Yes, it it, it all is. Three, but in blended. But all of them together, you get the same thing where it is. It is like that, like like you mentioned the you know like like the Swiss chocolate going in, then it melts and right. it, it, it's that same mouthfeel all across on all of them. What is the uh, what is the name of that chocolate? And that with the pear uh, brandy, 
I'll have to I have to look that up and see. I don't remember off the top of my head, but um, it might be it might be Toysher. I know we we they do a, a champagne truffle, so a chocolate truffle with a champagne cream filling, and they do a bunch of other specialty chocolates like that. And that's probably it, but I have to check to be sure. But we usually get those around Christmas time, and they're just they're amazing. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's good. If you stay so, in for a second afterwards, we'll steal your email address and. We'll have Ben do research. We'll put them to work. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so, great. Now, guys, I really do appreciate it. This has been a great time tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this has been good. All right. Well, like, and we appreciate you coming on. We just want you to know that and being so giving of your time. Thank you, everyone in the chat, for stopping out and sticking with us. Um, I think you found a great selection. Who We all know who they've worked with. Now, these are some of their own. These are all the eight and sand, the Rossville Union, the Barrel Proof, the Remus, the uh, Remus Repeal, the Volstead, if you can find it, and the new version of the Volstead, which I'm even more excited about. Um, we'll all be, we're all either out there or coming out in the next couple of weeks. You should be able to find them 16 places. If not, check online. You know, there's other places. Yeah. Or if you have to find a mule from a different state, they can. Things can show up and not the mail. Um, but somehow they can find their way to your house. We all know how this works. Um, so I just want to say thank you, Annie, for stopping in, and we appreciate you so much. Um, everyone in the chat, thank you. And remember, it is – hold on here. i got to get one thing set up. Remember, it's not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of whiskey. Cheers, hey. everybody. Salute. Salute. Let's get into it. One, two, three.